So let's take the second example. Now in this example, we are given a system of linear equations. We have x plus y plus z equals 9, 2x plus 5y plus 7z equals 52, and then 2x plus y minus z equals 0. Now we are going to solve this system of linear equations for x, y, and z using Gaussian elimination. So the first thing we are going to do is to represent this system of linear equations in an argumented matrix form. So we are going to represent the coefficients of the x, y, z for the three equations as well as the constants on the right hand side of the equal to sign. So equation 1 corresponds to row 1, equation 2 for row 2 and equation 3 also for row 3. So for the coefficients of equation 1, we have 1, 1, 1. On the right hand side of the equal to sign, we have 9. Also for equation 2 or for row 2, we have 2, 5, 7, 52. Also for row 3, we have 2, 1, negative 1, 0. So this is the argumented form of the matrix. Now the next thing we are going to do is to perform the elementary row operations in order to make sure that all the elements in the leading diagonal goes to 1 and the elements below the leading diagonal goes to 0. So that is exactly what we are going to do here. So first of all, let's try to make these values go to 0. Now focusing on this value, you realize that we have a 2 here and we also have a 2 here. Now to make this value go to 0, we can simply perform the operation on row 2. That is, we are going to subtract row 3 from row 2. Now if we should subtract row 3 from row 2, then we are going to get this value to be 0. So let's perform the operation on row 2. And the operation is row 2 minus row 3. So elements of row 1 and row 3 remains the same. So we have 1, 1, 1 equals 9. For row 3, we have 2, 1, negative 1, 0. So for row 2, we have 2 minus row 3, that is also 2, and that is equal to 0. So we have this value to be 0. We also have row 2, which is 5, minus row 3, 1, and that is 4. And then we have 7 minus negative 1, and that is 7 plus 1, which is 8. And then 52 minus 0, and that is 52. Now at this point, we are also going to make this value also go to 0. So what we can do is to multiply row 1 by 2 and subtract row 3 from the combination. So performing the operation on row 3, the operation is going to be 2 times row 1 minus row 3. So elements in row 1 and row 2 remains unchanged. We have 1, 1, 1 equals 9, 0, 4, 8 equals 52. And then for row 3, 2 times of row 1. So the first element is 1. So 2 times of 1 minus 2 and that is equal to 0. So we have this value to be 0. Now for the second set of values, we have 2 times 1 minus 1 and that is equal to 1. 
and then for the last set of values 2 times 1 minus negative 1 and that is the same as 2 times 1 plus 1 and that is equal to 3 so we have this value to be 3 and then for the values on the right hand side 2 times 9 minus 0 that is equal to 18 so we have that also to be 18 now at this point we have this value to be 0 this value also to be 0 we are left with this value now to make sure that this value goes to 0 the best thing to do is to multiply row 3 by 4 so that this value becomes 4 and then you subtract that from row 2 so we are still going to perform the operation on row 3 and the operation is row 2 minus 4 times of row 3 so we still have 1 1 1 equals 9 0 4 8 equals 52 now performing the operation on row 3 we have row 2 minus 4 times of row 3 now for row 2 we have 0 minus 4 times of 0 that is equal to 0 we have 4 minus 4 times of 1 and that is equal to 0 and then here we have 8 minus 4 times of 3 now 4 times 3 is 12 so 8 minus 12 is negative 4 so we have this value to be negative 4 and then on the right hand side we have 52 minus 4 times 18 now 4 times 18 is 72 so 52 minus 72 we have negative 20 so this value is negative 20 so at this point we've been able to make these values go to 0 now let's focus on the element in the leading diagonal we already have this value to be 1 let's focus on this and then that which means that we are going to perform the operation on row 2 and row 3 now if you want to make this value go to 0 then we are going to multiply row 2 by 1 fourth now if we should do that then this value goes to 1 so we perform the operation on row 2 and the operation is 1 fourth times row 2 now also for row 3 since we want to make this value go to 1 we are going to multiply row 3 by negative 1 fourth so negative 1 fourth times row 3 will make this value go to 1 so let's do that together so row 1 remains unchanged we have 1 1 equals 9 1 1 1 equals 9 for row 2 we are going to multiply each element by 1 fourth so 1 over 4 times 0 is 0 1 over 4 times 4 is 1 1 over 4 times 8 is 2 1 over 4 times 52 is 13 now for row 3 negative 1 over 4 times 0 is 0 negative 1 over 4 times 0 is 0 negative 1 over 4 times negative 4 is 1 and then negative 1 over 4 times negative 20 is 5 so at this point we've been able to make all the elements in the leading diagonal go to 1 and the elements below the leading diagonal go to 0 so we call this the row echelon form at this point let's transform this matrix into 
a system of linear equations to find the value of x, y, and z. So we have this to be the x values, y values, and z values. So for equation 1, that is going to be x plus y plus z equals 9. For equation 2, we have y plus 2z equals 13. And then for equation 3, we have z equals 5. Now from equation 3, you realize that z is equal to 5. So substituting this value into equation 2, we can find the value of y. So from equation 2, we have y plus 2z equals 13. Now z is equal to 5. So that becomes y plus 10 equals 13. y equals 13 minus 10. And that is equal to 3. So we say that y is equal to 3. Now let's substitute the values of z and then y into equation 1 to find the value of x. So we have x plus y, which is 3, plus z, which is 5, equals 9. Now 3 plus 5 is 8. So x plus 8 equals 9. And then x is equal to 9 minus 8. And that is equal to 1. So we have x equals 1. So therefore we have x equals 1, y equals 3, and then z equals 5. And since we have at least one solution, then we say that this system is consistent.